running sentences, presents The Hapless Nomadic Cook, Episode 6, The Guest. A guest has arrived looking to trade goods and to learn and teach about food. Grubba is, however, hiding out in the woods, as he fears that the tribe now expects him to come up with a new way to cook things again. It, all because his, his new, new way, while entertaining, didn't seem to win over the tribe. This is a work of fiction. Any names, characters, places, businesses, events that occur within this story are all of the author's imagination. Any resemblance to actual people, living, dead, real, or unreal, is purely a coincidence. I would also like to mention that this should not be taken as a serious look at how tribal nomadic cooks were in prehistoric times. This is just a work of fiction with a bit of fun happening to it and is rather silly and should not be taken as more than as a silly story. Copyright 2021, Michael Hunter. All rights reserved. Grubba glanced out from the woods across to the little town that he'd called home. It was a nice sight, a simple one, with huts all over the place and fires going and some comforts to be had. But there was no way he could return. No, not after running away, because the tribe went scary over a piece of meat that had been cooked a little differently. Nope, nope, nope. A hand tapped him on the shoulder, and he nearly jumped out of his skin before flinging himself around to see Bounce looking at him. What you doing? I'm um, uh, uh, looking at the town. Why? Cause, uh, because I want to go, but, you know, it doesn't seem like the right thing to do. Why? You saw the way the townspeople reacted when they learned about the new cooking method, right? And Mugga seemed to love it, and, well, they'll probably expect more of that from me, and I don't really have that in me, I don't think. I just can't deal with them. Are you sure about that? Grubba, for the first time, realized that there was a person next to Bounce and jumped back another step. As the rather attractive man who was standing idly by a tree next to Bounce made his presence known. Oh, sorry, I forgot this, this here is Searcher who trades good and does cooking just like you, Grubba. I uh, see. Well, um, good luck. He turned and began to walk off into the woods, but found that Bounce had already moved to cut him off and was pointing towards town. I think you need it in town, though. He found himself turning and heading back towards town instead of the woods. Escape would have to wait for another moment. At the edge of town, the little trio found Mugga standing there, looking rather pleased with himself. Grubba was sure that it wasn't because he was returning, and intended to march straight on as Bounce and Searcher came to a stop. It's good to see you, Searcher. Thank you for bringing him in, Bounce. Uh, you two can go right in. As for you, Grubba, you stop right there. This, however, caused Grubba to increase his, his walking pace to a slight, fast walk. He was almost running through the town with Mugga giving equal chase as they moved further inside the town. And Grubba found himself doing his best to dodge out of the way of any tribal members that came into sight of him. No, stop! Just here to grab some stuff and run. No, you don't! Stop now! This was of course ignored, since Grubba was terribly afraid that something bad was going to happen to him. Which he, of course, realized that since he was running, was definitely going to be the case. His running had led him straight to his former hut that he shared with Grubba, which, having nowhere else to go, Grubba promptly crawled in through the opening. The inside of the hut offered no way out other than through the, the opening which Grubba had crawled through. He could try the little hole of a space that was created to let air through in the back, but he was sure that it would only fit his head out and the rest of him would get stuck, and he did not want to get stuck. So he crawled over to his bed spot and crawled into a ball to wait to be dragged out. He waited, and when nothing happened, he quietly went over to the little window to peek out and see if there was anyone there. And since there wasn't, he decided to set about work, trying to claw away some of the dirt to make the hole bigger and to allow him some escape. He'd had some success and had failed to 
realize that anything else was in the room when he felt something grab his ankles. Come on, Grubber. The leader wants to see you. I'm sorry, I didn't do anything. If you let me go, I'll, get, I'll do anything. Drubber continued to drag him out. Once fully pulled outside, Drubber picked Grubber up so that he was standing on his feet and pushed him forward. To the leader we go. There's nothing I can say that will convince you to let me go. You have nothing to offer, Grubber. Grubber, of course, winced that this is far too true of a statement, and with a pout, he marched forward. Drubber also followed, keeping a few paces behind, just to make sure that Grubber was going where he needed to go. They soon found themselves not to the leader's hut on the hill, but to the cooking hut, with no sign of dear Mugga anywhere. There was, however, Journey, who was standing outside of the hut, working on cleaning some stones while trying to keep her long hair out of her face. She glanced up as they approached. Oh, you're back. Well, that's probably why Mugga is inside the hut. You better hurry in. They stepped inside and were greeted by the figure of Mugga standing very much in the way. Grubba tried to step to the side and get past, but the dear leader was having none of it. What have you been doing? Are you trying to get thrown out of the tribe, Grubba, after I so nicely let you in? Well, I figured I had already been thrown out since... Never mind all of that. We need cooks, as we have a guest who trades in goods, and has come to learn and teach us their ways, so we need you to teach him some of our ways. You, Grubba, are to follow him around and make sure that nothing bad happens to him. Then we can talk about all of this other stuff that has happened. Are you sure you just want that? I mean, I did just run away and... Maga glared at him and then pushed past to the exit and left the hut. Grubba followed him out to make sure that the answer was yes, but also now he had to find out where this man named Searcher was to be found. He got his confirmation and went about searching for this searcher, but the search had not gone well for Grubba. He'd gone here and there looking for this traitor, but the man had vanished, which meant that Bounce had probably taken him somewhere, and since none of the outside gatherers had, that had returned had seen this man, that only left one place for Grubba to go to. He approached her hut with a bit of exhaustion. So, you say this is how you live, my dear? It is very simple looking. Yeah, it's pretty simple here. We like it simple. Makes it easy to move on to the next location when the weather turns. Hearing Bounce's voice quite literally bounce out of her hut, he was at the doorway, but wondered if barging in was a good idea, and then decided to do it anyway. The light was dim inside of the hut, despite the bright sunny day outside casting its light everywhere. Grubba did his best to stand up and look like he hadn't just been crawling on his hands and knees to get in here, but was unsure if they even saw him or were paying any attention to the fact that somebody was coming in. Oh, Grubba, just the man I was hoping would come in. I told Searcher here about our little adventure with the mushroom. Grubba winced a little bit. Oh, um... Yes, quite an odd thing you found. I'd like to see it if I could find some and try them for myself if I could. Well, I'm sure Bounce can probably find some for you, but, uh, you were assigned to learn from me and I to learn from you, right? Well, let's get to that since talking all day isn't really interesting to me. The man who had been sitting rather closely to Bounce crawled on his hands and knees towards the doorway. This forced Grubba to scramble out of the way as the man was very intent on getting out of there. And once he was out, Grubba looked over at Bounce, who seemed to be rather interested in something else instead of the fact that this man had just left. And so he, too, went out. Grubba found himself leading the way back to the cooking hut, desperately searching his mind for something to say to get off the, on the right foot with Searcher. However, nothing was coming to him, and before he knew it, they were both walking into the cooking hut. The fire in the hut had settled down as Nap tended to it while Journey was busy setting up new sticks or hanging food over the fire. 
Grubba came in closer with Zercher following. Um, Journey and uh, Nap, we have a visitor who is to learn from us, who is to learn cooking from us. The two women looked up to see Searcher smiling and brushing past Grubba towards them, offering his hand. My name is Searcher. I am a trader of fine, fine goods, and I can cook as well. I've come to learn and teach you what I can. To teach us. Journey looked over at Grubba and then back at Searcher. Nap, however, seemed quite taken to him and walked right up to him to shake his hand. Oh, you know how to cook things. We've discovered a couple of ways to cook things as well. How are your ways compared to our ways? I know many, many things that I will gladly help you with, miss. But first, I need to see your work. So don't mind me. I'll be in the back of this hut watching you do your usual. The man then headed to the back of the hut, while the other three looked on to one another, then back to work. The food was soon cooked as the afternoon ran into the evening, and they went from cooking to handing it out. When that was all completed, Grubba found himself with his food in hand, standing around the now empty hut. Although it was not completely empty, as Serger had been allotted a small portion of food by nap. When the man stepped outside the hut, he looked cautiously around the night air that was coming in, and stared firmly at Grubba who had stepped out beside him and had begun walking away, not thinking much of the matter. Excuse me, uh, Grubba, was it? Grubba stopped and realized he still hadn't taken care of this person per se, then turned around and hurried back to him. Oh, sorry, sorry, um, did the glorious leader assign you a place to sleep? Yes, he said he wanted me to stay with him or something like that. Something about telling him stories of my life out there, traveling these lands going from town to town and getting fine, fine goods and foods. Especially foods. Oh, um, well, good for you. I can show you the way, though, so follow me right this way. Grower then set off in a different direction, heading towards the hill which Mugga's little hut sat upon. The trip from the town below to the hut where Mugga called home was a short one. Grappa had kept up quite a pace to make sure to deliver Searcher directly to the leader. They were greeted by Vaka when they came to the top. Oh, hey, it's Grubba. How are you, buddy? Good, good. Who is this? Uh, this is Searcher, Vaka. He trades in goods and apparently teaches cooking as well as learning about cooking or something about cooking. Oh, you're the one Uncle Mugga talked about. You're both wanted inside. And so they went inside. The hut was as Grubba remembered it, a dirt floor and kids running around with little thought for those around them. They moved towards the center of the hut, which had been made bigger, so that a fire could be placed in the middle of it, with a hole in the roof over the fire, to help keep the place clear of any smoke. Near to this fire sat Mugga, who was enjoying the warmth from the flames that were dancing about the pit. Mugga looked over at them and then waved them over. Ah, it's Archer. I've been waiting for you so that I can hear your glorious stories that I've heard you mention. Come, sit by this fire. Searcher did as he was directed and was soon seated by Mugga. Grubba, on the other hand, stood near the entranceway, awkwardly nibbling on his food and wondering if he should go. Oh yes, you're also here, Grubba. Um, thank you for delivering our friend here. Um, tomorrow, I think we shall have a nice chat about your stone cooking. Maybe you can teach dear searcher here about it. To this, Grubba could only nod, and then ducked out of the place, grateful to get away. Crawling to safety, and doing his best to hold on to his food, did not go well for Grubba. He managed to drop a few pieces of veggies, and was now searching for them on the ground in the dark, and was surprised to see Bounce handing him his stuff. She pushed her hair from her ear once he'd taken his stuff back. Is a searcher in there? Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. She then disappeared inside the hut. and He thought this was very, very strange and odd, but it was too much for him to care about, and so he made his way back towards his own hut. When the morning rolled its lazy way around the next day, Rubber found himself doing what he always does, headed for the cooking hut, 
and hoping that it would be a day that he could come up with something creative to keep people happy. He had his doubts that it would be this way, and when he approached the hut, he saw that there were a few females of the tribe all gathered around Searcher outside, and this man seemed to have their entirety of these young ladies' attention. His grubber came to a stop for a second and stared, before deciding that it did not concern him, and headed for the hut. He managed to get past the group without really being noticed or paid attention to. He entered the empty cooking hut, which was a little unusual, since Journey and Nap were usually here by now. And if not them, then Vaka would be running around doing something. But there was no one, and not even a fire was going. Grubba set about getting the fire started and, and using it to warm himself up on what was turning out to be a cooler than usual morning. The peacefulness of it all, aside from the noisy, grunty crowd out front, was then interrupted by a heavy crack of thunder. Grubba jumped, as did many people at the sound, which was then followed by a heavy flash of light. The crowd outside soon ran off, and he found that Journey, Nap, and Searcher came inside just as the fire was picking up. Oh, Grubba, you're here. Good, at least someone has sense in them. I've been trying to pull Nap away from that weird group for a while. Could you go get us the meat? He nodded and began heading towards the exit, and found that Searcher was following him. Upon getting outside, he glanced at the sky and saw that it was indeed a darkening, swirling grayness above him. And there was one thing that Grubba was sure of, of what that would mean. Water was going to be coming, and he didn't want to get caught up in it falling from the sky. He went, and Grubba decided that standing around in a standstill next to the cooking hut was not a terribly great idea, and began sprinting his way across to where, where Butcher was. Upon arrival there, Butcher, who had just gotten started on yesterday's animal of choice, looked up surprised to see them. I ain't ready yet. When will it be? When the glowy thing reaches the top of the sky or thing or whatever. Grubba peeked outside and stared up at the grey skies that had decided just about that moment to open up and let all of the water it could out. He then pulled himself back inside and looked at Butcher. Seems like I might not know when that time exactly is. Butcher glanced about the place in the heavy rains that were falling. Oh, I guess I'll come get you. Now you and your stranger shoe. Grubba had already forgotten about Searcher and looked over at the man who seemed rather content with the way things were going, just following around. To this, Grubba could only shrug. He had nothing to say to this man, and if the man didn't talk or teach him, it was not his fault, he figured. On the journey back to the cooking hut, Grubba tried to play the game of Dodge the Rain. This might have worked had the rain been a little bit more light or sparse. The fact that he bothered spending any time on this game bothered him, but it gave him something to do as he tried to figure out if he should try and teach Searcher something, or if just letting this whole awkward silence go on between them was okay. And this game also gave him something to do as he ran, getting soaked by the rain, and they ran towards the cooking hut once more. Once there, Grubba went directly over to the fire while Journey looked on questioningly at him, with Searcher following him over towards the fire. Nap, on the other hand, had taken to getting close to Searcher, as, well, as close as she dared, as he warmed himself by the fire. Uh, sorry, Journey, the meat isn't ready yet. Butcher is still working on it. Oh, is it still that early? Grubba nodded and knelt down by the fire to get more heat on himself. Grubba, I've been meaning to ask since it wasn't used yesterday when you were cooking, but that stone method, um, I believe Mugger mentioned it to me. Grubba looked around for the stone but didn't see it anywhere and began to stand up. He didn't even get to move very far as Nap had run off and grabbed it from the supplies on a split log that had been used to put some stuff on. She was back in a flash and held it out for Searcher, who took it and began looking it over. Mmm, oh yes, interesting. And does any old rock do this, or is it just this one type? Um, I don't know, really. Uh, Journey? Nap? 
You two? No, I mean, you two have probably been experimenting more than I have. Me and Journey tested a couple of not-so-flat stones to see what would happen. It didn't work out as well as this one, but it works. And to add to that, we did test another stone that was flat, and we got some results. But they were decent enough. And can I see this cooking process on this stone? Nap had already gotten the stone back from Searcher, and was working on getting some vegetables set up for cooking. She was intent on using both the stone and her water method of cooking. The two were soon lost in work as Journey pulled Greba off to the side and away from them. Um, Greba, this guy seems weird. You thought the same about me when I first came here. It's fine, I'm sure, uh, maybe. If I had to guess, he's probably still think I'm weird, even a little bit. It'll be fine. Mugga wants him around and... Well, he's the leader, so he gets what he wants. Anyway, let's not worry about it. And we'll deal with it when we can. And if we leave these two here testing this stuff, who knows how fast they'll run out of it. Well, help me go grab some food supplies from storage. The run to the storage had not been a pleasant one. The rain seemed to come down much, much harder the second they stepped out of the cooking hut and chased them all the way across to the storage area. There, the cold hut was crowded as many of the foragers were forced to come back early. They all seemed to be waiting for the storm to lighten up before heading out once again. Grub and Journey did their best to dodge around these people as they got supplies and then girded themselves once again for the journey back, only to be stopped by Bounce, who was by the door and had spotted them. Where's Searcher? Journey had nearly breezed past, but faltered at the mention of the name. Uh, Bounce, you'll find him in the cooking hut. And the two were suddenly out the door, leaving Grubba standing there with his supplies and shaking his head, wondering what this was going to lead to. And then he followed them. Grubba had decided to take his time getting back to the cooking hut, since he didn't really want to deal with Searcher. And since the storm was going to get him soaking wet no matter what he did, he just took his time. He found Journey waiting for him just inside, and she grabbed away the vegetables and pointed off. Go and check on Butcher. We don't need him traveling about in this weather getting sick. But it's okay if I do. She nodded and headed deeper into the hut. With, with slumped shoulders, Grubba could only turn and made his trek onwards towards the cut hut. A fully soaked grubba came into this hut, where Butcher seemed to have finished up most of his work, though he eyed grubba suspiciously when he slopped his way into the place, and then, as he sat down heavily on the ground, looking tired, Butcher put aside his sharp stones and looked at him. How'd you know I was done? Huh? Oh, I didn't. Just figured that this was a safer place to be than hanging out around the cooking hut. Things are getting weird with Searcher. Who? Uh, the man I was with. Oh, what's wrong with him? Um, well, he attracts the attention of everyone. He seems to attract everyone's attention, and they seem to want to stare and be around him, especially the ladies. They seem to all have decided that he should be the focal of their attention. As well as the curse of those that have not been in our tribe. You went through it a bit, I believe. Though you also ran away many times. Just learn what you can from him and take this meat away. We don't want it sitting around here. Grubber, sloppily and wetly, rose from his seat on the ground and grabbed up what meat he could that had been put on a nearby log and was out of the hut in a hurry. He was not interested in listening to any lectures today. As he made his trips back and forth, getting all of the meat over to the cooking area, he was stopped many, many times by different town residents, all of whom braved the rain to ask where Searcher was. Grebo, of course, told them, and then continued on his journey back and forth. When he was done with his work, he found that he could not actually enter the cooking hut anymore because it was stuffed with people. All of them, he guessed, were looking to talk to Searcher, and no matter how much he pushed and tried to 
prod his way in, they wouldn't budge, and would often give him very disapproving looks for trying to do anything. He wondered if it was because he touched them in the wrong spot or something, but either way, he gave up and headed around towards the back of the hut. There, to his surprise, he found Journey desperately trying to set up a fire in the rain. She was having little success since everything was entirely all too wet, and there was no cover to stop any more water from coming down on them. A uh, journey. What? She turned and saw Grubba standing there slightly helplessly with the last delivery of meat. Perhaps we should go try the wood storage hut to get cooking. She shrugged at this, and since they were both getting so wet, she went into the cooking hut to grab some stuff while he hurried off. To Grubba's relief, the wood hut, which was a large and spacious hut, and with that stored wood to be dried and for cooking, and general fires, still had its fire going. Were with Tooth, the woodsman working to make sure that it was all set and warm inside, and that all of the wood was ready for anyone who should need some. He glanced over as the wet and soggy Grubba stumbled in. Tooth, we have a problem. Oh, the cooking hut has been taken over because everyone wants to see Searcher. Can we use your hut and your fire? Oh, is Searcher over there? Hmm, well, I wanted to ask him a question or two. Um, uh, um, yeah, I guess use my fire. The woodsman then just wandered out of the hut as Journey came in carrying some goods. Oh, good, a fire. Well, we can use that. The duo set about cooking up food and they'd managed to scavenge and soon had it all done. And much to their surprise, the tribe had managed to find where the cooking was going on and had lined up once again. The food was passed out, and they were soon able to retire for the night after having their own meals. Grubba was just stepping out of the wood hut when he felt someone grab his arm and drag him off into the darkness. He opened his mouth to protest that he was being dragged away, but was cut off. Hush you, unless you want all of these ladies to come find me. Grubba fell quiet and was pulled into the dark night. They did not go far, however, as Searcher decided that they were going in a roundabout way back to the back of the cooking hut, where Searcher would finally let go of him. Why are you here, and, um, who, uh, I can't see you amongst all of this muck and fog, and all of the rain is finally gone, and... I am Searcher, you fool. Who else would the ladies be chasing after? I don't know. I don't pay attention to that. What are we doing here? I want you to teach me your cooking methods. Keep getting bothered by your weird townspeople, and I don't like it. Searcher pushed Grubba inside the cooking hut and followed in. The two set about doing their best to get a fire working in the cooking hut, and he showed Searcher all that he knew once that was going. What he quickly discovered was that he didn't really know all that much, and Grubba found himself sort of puzzling over the fire as he started cooking on some sticks and also put a stone close by. But he was also stopped by Searcher, who didn't look happy about what he was doing. No, 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 no. I've seen all of this already. I don't care about that stuff. I want to know about the secret ingredient that Mugga was crowing about. Secret ingredient? Grebba looked about the place, and then over at Searcher, and then over around the dark interior of the cooking hut once again. Yes, he said something about putting it on food, and it made it taste so much better. Oh! Salt, I think. Uh, we call it salt, I think. Yeah, uh, there's some in the storage hut. I'll go see if I can get some for you. You can tend to this fire. Grubba headed out of the cook hut, and had gone just down the pathway to the storage one. He was moving as quickly as the muddy path would allow him to go, his feet making a lot of weird noises. Strangely enough, the noises kept repeating itself, and so he stopped, and the noise stopped. He turned around to see that Searcher had followed him. What are you doing? Uncovering the secrets of this tribe. It shall be recorded in the history of word... And people will know where this great 
new ingredient came from. But I need to see it, and I need to know about it first. Grubba could only roll his eyes and shrugged, then continued on his way. You're making a big deal about something that isn't a big deal, by the way. I shall be the judge. They'd arrived at the storage hut where they stopped at the door. Grubba looked carefully inside since there was a light coming from inside when there obviously shouldn't be. It was already the evening and, and people should already be back at their own huts. Hello? Oh, Grubba, hi. The hut was lit by a torch, which Bounce was holding as she sat on the ground in the center of the storage hut. Grubba entered with his eyebrows raised, trying to figure out why she was there and why she was just sitting there all alone. I came in because I wanted to get something to eat as dinner was a little skimpy today. Why was it so small? Um, because you and the others took over the hut we used to cook and we didn't have room to cook while everyone paid attention to searcher over here. Oh... As she was nodding to this, he went over to a nearby log that had a bunch of salt rocks on it and grabbed a few handfuls of the stuff. What are you doing, by the way? Showing our guest this secret ingredient. As he turned to head back out, she bounced up from her position and followed him. Back outside of the hunt, Grubba held out his hand to the, offer the rocks to Searcher, who looked at him and then the rocks. Those are... Salt. It's a uh, salt. Uh, it's a bit big in this form, but easier to transport around in this way. What do you need the salt for, Searcher? Searcher's glance instantly went over to Bounce. He narrowed his eyes, annoyed, but then flexed them back to normal. I need it so that I can create a history for this tribe, and with that history, get other tribes interested and they will trade with me, and I will be the one who brought salt to this world. It is called salt, right? Um, yeah, it's it's called salt, but, um, uh, um, but uh, are you taking this away from us? I mean, we're the only ones who still have it. Yes, yes, of course you still have it. You will still have it, and you will trade it to me, who will then get you goods from other tribes, and we will create an empire of whatever this ingredient is again. Okay. Well, I'm tired, so here's the rock, and good night? Searcher grabbed the salt from Grubba's hand, looking very pleased with the sight. But then, as Grubba had headed off, he was suddenly passed by the fleeing searcher, who was trailed by Bounce, who was bouncing along excitedly after him. Having gotten back to his hut and laid down on his little sleeping spot, Grubba found himself staring at the ceiling, wondering why searcher was so eager to have salt. It wasn't that great of a thing, but it was nice. It was a nice thing to have, definitely for sure. But to create an empire out of it? What was that about? And what's an empire? And he yawned as he tried to figure out what an empire might be, and if it was a mistranslated grunt that hadn't quite gotten to him correctly. But this line of thought only made him more sleepy, so he closed his eyes. When he crawled out of the hut the next morning, he was greeted by the sight of Searcher, holding a basket of water and furiously gulping it down. The man was sitting by the hut entrance, cross-legged and not paying the least bit of attention to anything but the water. Hello, searcher. This caused the man to toss aside the bucket and jump to his feet, pointing at Grabba, who was getting up to his feet as well. That stuff is cursed. The salt? The, you mean the salt? Yes! I guess, yeah. Uh, the gods seem to not like people eating too much of this stuff. The tribe will tell you that, only begins to curse you with the need to drink stuff. Anyway, did you just eat it? Like it was just rock and you just munched on it? I, you, know, you, you know you're supposed to put it on other meat. No, I was not fully aware. I see. Well, come on, I'll show you. Grubba took a moment to stretch and then began plodding his way towards the cooking hut. He paid no mind to the fact that Searcher was gathering his unusual group of followers that were namely ladies of the tribe, and they were... Very, very close to Searcher, 
as he also did his best to ignore them. Grebo, of course, walked straight past Journey, who was guarding the cooking hut, with her arms crossed. She held up her hand as he walked by with a very serious expression on her face. At least, he was pretty sure that's what it was when he passed by. He was never good at reading faces, unless they were very, very obviously mad. And so, he just dealt with it, never being able to read faces. Inside, he found Nap, who was tending to the fire and getting it all warmed up. She was busy with her work and didn't even pay attention when he cleared his throat. And with a shrug, he looked around for some work. But there was none, since Journey was outside, and she usually kept things in order and told him what to do. He turned to ask, but saw her holding court over the tribe, outside. I understand the tribe wants to be around Searcher, since he's the new thing in town. But you cannot come into the cook hut to watch or talk to him. You did that yesterday, and then complained to us when the rations were shorter and smaller than they usually are. It's because we couldn't cook for you. Let us do our job. So, if you don't want food, stay here and bother this man. However, if you do want food for tonight, go away, or else Mugga will come down here as well. The group began to break up, letting Searcher head into the hut. Journey stayed outside for a little while longer until the group of females were broken up and gone. Nice speech there. She came in. Thank you. I was desperately needed to be done. Ah, uh, you need your assignment for the day, don't you? If you could go out into the woods and collect some sticks so that we have stuff to cook on again. Our old ones kind of went out with a fire. He nodded and found that Searcher was once again right behind him as he was heading out. They reached the woods shortly, and Grebo went about collecting thick but not thick sticks. He knew that he wanted sturdy things that would stand up to the weight of meat being put on them, or those green little things being put on them, but were not too big to lug about. Searcher, on the other hand, stood around and watched him. Are these some sort of special sticks that allow you to cook, Mr. Grubba? No, as far as I know, they're just... No, they're just normal sticks. Oh, you know, they just eventually break after so many uses and being so close to the fire. Uh, when wood is near heat, it just, you know, and the fire, it just burns and it just, eventually, it just goes away and we need to get new ones. Is that all there really is to this tribe? You're all so boring, yet you found an ingredient that no one else should have, and has. How have you found this? Grubba could only shrug as he picked up a few more sticks. As Vaka, he found the salt rocks. Searcher, who had been playing around with a tiny twig in his hands, threw it down onto the ground. Fine, I will. The man huffed and puffed his way out of the woods, as Grubba did his best to find the needed sticks for work. With all of his new sticks in tow, Grubba made his way back, back towards town and he just about reached the edge where the beaten footpath began, and Mugga was very angrily looking at him and grunting loudly at him. Though what it was about, Grubba couldn't tell as, as he kept walking towards the leader, with the thought that perhaps now might be a good time to run away again, since dealing with angry leaders was never his strong suit. Alas, he found himself walking towards Mugga, not stopping. Grubba, what have you done? Grubba held up his sticks. As per Journey's orders, I went and got cooking sticks. Come with me now. They'd gone through the town with Mugga leading them to the storage hut, which had an odd contraption in front of it. Then, out of the hut, popped Searcher with lots of salt rocks in his hands, and they were placed in earnest onto this strange box. Searcher looked over at them and then did his best to duck back into the hut. What did you do, Grubba? He was fine, and now he's acting like this. Searcher, you mean? I mean, I taught him how to cook, and, and what our salt is, and other than that, though, I didn't really do anything. Uh, I do believe he wants to take our salt and use it to trade with other tribes, though. So said something about an empire. Searcher once again popped out with more salt rocks. This time, though, Mugga stepped over to grab at him. Are you trying to take our salt without 
offering a trade in return, searcher? I offered a trade. I did. I did. Your little worker over there couldn't come up with any offers. No, you didn't. You went on and on about the salt and how you make a thing called an empire out of it. You never made any trade offers or even taught me anything. Searcher wrenched his way free of Mugga, who continually tried to grab at him and then at the rocks. But Searcher grabbed at this device that had these round things attached to the box. Ha ha, suckers! You thought I'd help your stupid tribe like you? And with that, the round things on his box object began to spin as he grabbed hold of it, and then began moving, covering ground with Searcher steering it away from town towards the woods. Someone stop that man! Hunters! Tribe members! Searcher is doing something! Searcher managed to make it to the woods, and with many tribe members chasing after him. They had spent much of the day in the woods and had come up with nothing as a result. The search for Searcher had come up with Nada. Grubba was among them as he trudged back towards Mugga, who was standing guarding the edge of town. We have all learned an important lesson today, gentlemen and ladies and tribe members, and that is not to trust these strange people who are not of this tribe. Grubbo could only shake his head at this speech. It seemed to be going on and on, and wondered where it was going to go. But the smell of cooked food drew him past the shouting Mugga, who was also quickly overwhelmed by those tribal members who were hungry, having spent the day in the woods searching for Searcher. End of episode 6. Thank you for listening.